ومن سلك طريقا يلتمس فيه علما سهل الله له به طريقا إلى الجنة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم اغفر لنا ولشيخنا ول... اللهم اغفر لنا ولشيخنا ولوالديه وللمسلمين أجمعين أما بعد اللهم قال المؤلف رحمه الله فإذا عرفت أن جهان الكفار So when you have come to know that the ignorant amongst the unbelievers knew all of this then it is amazingly strange that one who claims Islam for himself yet he does not even know the explanation of this word, the kalima which even the ignorant amongst the unbelievers knew rather he even thinks that it merely involves the utterance of its letters without the heart believing in any of its meanings even the intelligent and shrewd amongst them the ones who claim Islam think that its meaning is that none creates or sustains and nourishes but Allah and none controls the affairs except Allah so there can be no goodness in a person when the ignorant ones amongst the unbelievers are more knowledgeable than him of the meaning of La ilaha illallah Hasbuk Jazakallah khairan These words of the Shaykh Rahimahullah these or this part is connected to the last part of last lesson where he says وَهَذَا تَوْحِدُهُ مَعْنَ قَوْلِكَ لَا إِلَهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ when he explained that the meaning of Tawheed is La ilaha illallah and he also explained that ilah means al-ma'bud alaha ya'luhu alaha ya'luhu al-ma'luh Allah Jalla wa'ala is the ilah and ilah in the Arabic language is the one that is worshipped and he mentions فَإِنَّ الْإِلَاهَ عِنْدَهُمْ the ilah according to them according to the Quraysh يُقْصَدُ لِأَجِلْ هَذِهِ الْأُمُّهِ he is the one that is Worshipped, regardless of if it is Allah Jalla wa'ala or idols or righteous individuals, angels and prophets and so on. Lakin al-ilah to them was the person or was or is someone that is worshipped. Whether it is an angel or nabiyan or waliyan or shajaratan or qabran or jinniya. Whether it is a jinn, a tree, a wali. Lam yuridu anna al-ilaha, they did not believe that ilah was the one that creates, the one that maintains and the one that provides. فَإِنَّهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ ذَلِكَ They knew that, and they knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, he, is the one that does this alone. لكن they meant what is known as Sayyid. طيب. And then he mentioned the kalim of La ilaha illallah. And the fact that the, mean, the reason why La ilaha illallah has been legislated is that we say it, we believe in it, and we come with all of the things that it necessitates. Meaning that it is not just something that we say La ilaha illallah and then we do everything that we want. Just like if a person wants to pray, they need to make wudu. صح? And once they make that wudu, they need to preserve that wudu if they want to pray. Like in a person cannot say, I am going to make wudu and then I'm not going to look after my wudu. I am going to break my wudu as much as I want and come with all of the nullifiers of wudu and then pray. They can't say that. That is, this is the same for La ilaha illallah. The fact that when you say La ilaha illallah, there are conditions that must be fulfilled. And there are uh, pillars of La ilaha illallah, of affirming for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, affirming all types of ibadah for Allah jalla wa ala, and negating all types of ibadah, uh, all types of ibadah from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Shaykh rahimahullah mentions that Quraysh, they knew the meaning of La ilaha illallah. Hence, they refused to what? To say it. That's why I said they said, أَجْعَلَ الْآلِهَةَ إِلَهًا وَاحِدًا Have, has, has he made all of the gods that they had? إِلَهًا وَاحِدًا Has he made it? One God. He's telling us to worship one Lord. إِنَّ هَذَا لَشَيْءٍ عُجَابٍ That is a strange affair. So they acknowledged what La ilaha illallah was and they knew what it meant. Hence, they refused to say it. That is why when Abu Talib was on his deathbed and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was standing on one side and Abu Jahl and his other companion was standing on the other side the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was saying to him Ya Am, O Am, say La ilaha illallah it is a word that I can argue on your behalf in the sight of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and they were telling him are you going to leave the religion of who? Abdul Muttalib so they knew the religion of Abdul Muttalib 
contradicted the religion of what? The Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. La ilaha illallah. They knew that the religion of Abdul Muttalib contradicted La ilaha illallah. Hence, they did not say it. So that's where we stand so far. Then the Sheikh rahimahullah here he says, "For if you know that the al kufar, if you know that the ignorant of the kufar or the Quraysh, يعرفونه ذلك that they know this, meaning La ilaha illallah." For the ajabu, then it is strange. Or well, the strangest thing is, مِمَّنْ يَدْعِ الْإِسْلَامِ The one that claims al islam وَهُوَ لَا يَعْرِفُ مِنْ تَفْسِيرِ هَذِهِ الْكَلِمَةِ And he doesn't even know the interpretation, the explanation, the meaning of this kalima. Which kalima? لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ He doesn't know مَا عَرَفَهُ جُهَالُ الْكُفَّارِ That which the juhal, those people of Quraysh, that did not uh, uh, listen to the Prophet, uh, did not obey the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and did not obey Allah Jalla wa ala, and that did not accept Islam, what they knew of La ilaha illallah, these mushrikun do not know. بَلْ يَظُنُّ أَنَّ ذَلِكَ هُوَ تَلَفُّضُ بِحُرُوفِهَا Rather they think that the objective of this, or the reason why it was that, تَلَفُّضُ بِحُرُوفِهَا Just to say its words, just to say La ilaha illallah. Meaning you can do anything after you say La ilaha illallah. مِنْ غَيْرِ اعْتِقَادِ الْقَلْبِ Without having belief in the heart. لِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْمَعَالِي Without having belief in the part in the heart for any of the things that it necessitates, i.e., al-nafiyul ithbat to affirm and to negate, and the conditions of la ilaha illallah. Well, hadiqu minhum. So he says the first lot, the mushrikeen of now, of his time, they do not know the meaning of la ilaha illallah. Well, hadiqu minhum, and the really smart one among them that considers himself to be a learned person, yadunu anna maanaha. He believes that the meaning of la ilaha illallah. Is لا يخلق ولا يرزق ولا يدبر الأمر إلا الله. He believes that the meaning of لا إله إلا الله is that no one creates and no one provides and no one maintains except Allah سبحانه وتعالى. That is what the smart one among them feels. فلا خير في رجل إن there's no goodness in a person who the people of كفار of the كفار of قريش the كفار أعلم بمعنى لا إله إلا الله. There's no goodness in that sort of person. Here, rahimahullah, he mentions some of the difference between, differences between the, the mushrikun of the past during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu and those of today. And we studied this in Qawaid, where? al Which Qaida? Who said the last one? Ahsant. The last one. And who remembers some of the differences? The shink. In this ummah, or in the latter generations, is much worse than the shirk of the past. Uh, the when they were on the boat, they were drowning, they were called upon Allah. Ahsant. So the brother said that the mushrikun of the past, if they were to come into a difficult situation, If they were faced with a difficult situation, then they would be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, the mushrikun of today, their shirk is worse when they are in a difficult situation. So you will find if they're in air, on an airplane or on a boat, if they're in an airplane or on a boat and then they go through turbulence or waves and so on, you find that they start calling upon the righteous people that they claim to be worth, uh, making dua to. They claim to be calling up, or they call upon them. Even in that dire need, dire, dire situation where they were meant to say, Ya Allah, where Yunus alayhi salam, in the way he called to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like in they, in that situation, call upon them. What did Musa say? Kalla inna ma'ya rabbi. Verily, my Lord is with me. What did Ibrahim say? Ibrahim had tawakkal in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hasbun Allahu. Lakin with these mushrikeen they say what? They call upon their dead. So that is another difference. What else? Yeah, they knew the mushrikeen of Quraysh. They knew the mushrikeen of Quraysh. They knew that they were upon a religion other than the religion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hence Abu, Ta- Abu, Laha, uh, Abu Jahl was saying to Abu Talib, are you going to die on a religion other than your father? Meaning, don't enter into your nephew's religion. طيب. Also, another difference is that the mushrikun of the past, the 
Ahsant. Excellent. So the mushrikun of the past, they knew the meaning of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. That's why they refused to say it. Because they knew it wasn't a word that was needed from them faqat. Like it meant it had something to it. Hence they refused to say it. Like in those mushrikun of today, the mushrik, they say La ilaha illallah day and night. However, they worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another difference is that the mushrikun of the past, their shirk was in where? Fil ibadah, in worship. As for uh, Rububiyyah, they worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it was said to them, who, is, who creates and so on and so forth, they would say Allah. Like in the mushrikun of today, you will find them saying, having shirk, even in Rububiyyah, saying that other than Allah Jalla wa'ala can create. Hence why you find the likes of Jifri saying that the wali can create a baby in the womb of the mother in, in the womb of a woman. However, he doesn't do so just to not com- cause confusion among the people. Hence you see them at times, the things that they are doing, claiming to be speaking to the Prophet. Claiming to be speaking to the Prophet, these sorts of things are things that the uqala of the mushrikun that had intellect, those they wouldn't do. Taib. When you have come when you have come to know what I have mentioned. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah in this part, he's going to mention a few points that he wants to lay down the foundations for, kind of like introduction. Four points. And then he's going to give you the conclusion to these four points. Tafadl. When you have come to know what I have mentioned, then you with a firm un- understanding of the heart and you have come to know the reality of the nature of so, shirk. Lahda. That is two. Read the first one. So you can number it if you've got the English one and if the, Eng- if the Arabic one, I will mention it, inshallah. Tafadl. No. When you have come to know what I have mentioned to you with a firm understanding yes. of... When you come to know... إِذَا عَرَفْتَ مَا قُلْتُ لَكَ that is number one. al ula The first point. If you know, come to know what I have what told you. A that which has preceded all of the foundations that I have just mentioned to you. He says Rahimahullah. And that you know this qalbin, And you know this in your heart and you have firm belief in it. Tafadl. And this now is the al thaniya the second introduction. And you have come to know the reality of the nature of shirk with no. Allah. Yeah. Yeah. And then the verse? The ayah? Yeah. Verily Allah forgives not that partner should be set up with him in worship, but he forgives forgives except that anything else to whom he pleases. Yeah. So he says, Rahimahullah, the second introduction. He says, if you come to know the meaning of shirk, associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you know its dangers, by Allah Jalla wa'ala saying, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushrika bihi. That Allah does not forgive that shirk is associated with him. That other than him, that Allah Jalla, that a person worships other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Jalla wa'ala doesn't forgive this person. That's obviously if a person what? Dies upon it. If a person dies upon it. Like if they repent and they accept Islam and they come back to Islam, khalas. Then Allah Jalla wa'ala forgives all sins and all shortcomings. So he's saying, Rahimahullah, Secondly, after firstly knowing with your heart, secondly, you know the dangers of shirk now. The fact that if you die upon shirk, then you are no longer a what? A Muslim. And your nar is what? Khalidan mukhalidan fin nar. You will remain in the fire for eternity because you died upon other than tawheed. And when you have come to know the true nature of the religion with Allah sent the messengers from the first to the last of them. Now. And that is the next point. Now that you've come to also know the Al Muqaddimah Al Thalitha, where Arafta Dina, Allah, He led the Baatha, be He Rusul, Min Awali Him Il Akhirim. Now that you've come to know the religion of the Prophets, the religion of the Prophets, and that Allah Jalla wa'ala sent them with what? The Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, Qad Baatha, Fi Kuli Umatin Rusul, and Abdullah, which then would talk to Allah, sent them with. Call into Iman, Tawheed, and staying away from Shirk and Daqut from the first and the last. So that's the third Muqaddimah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't accept a religion 
other than the religion of the Anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قال جل وعلا ومن يبتغي غير الإسلام دينا فلن يقبل منه وهو في الآخرة من الخاسرين. Whoever seeks a religion other than the religion of Islam, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept it from him and he is from the losers yawm al-qiyamah. Also Allah jalla wa ala says, وَغَدِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ And Allah jalla wa ala is pleased for you to have Islam as your religion. Allah jalla wa ala says, إِنَّ الدِّينَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الْإِسْلَامِ Verily the religion that is accepted in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Islam. And Islam is of two types. Al-Islam al-aam and al-Islam al-khas. Al-Islam al-aam, the general Islam, is that which every single messenger came with. Every single messenger that Allah Jalla wa'ala sent came with Islam. Hence they said to them, to their people, Ya qaw, ma lakum min ilahin? Ghayr. You do not have any aliha that you worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, Allah says, Allah says, An i'budullaha? That's what they were calling their people to. And then there's Al-Islam Al-Khas. And that is the Sharia of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which consists of everything that is in the Islam, Islam Al-Am, which from the Tawheed of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Anbiya Ikhwatun Al-Allat. The Anbiya are like brothers with different mothers. Meaning their religion is what? Deenuhum. Wahid, their religion is one. So the Islam, Islam that is khas is the sharia and the religion that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the risala, the message that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent with. Tay. That is the third muqaddimah. Ahsan, tafadun. And when you have come to know the great ignorance that the majority of people who have fallen into this regard, you will have acquired two benefits. Naam. So he says, the muqaddim al-rabi'ah starts from wa'arafta ma asbaha alayhi ghalib nas Starts from this point. That is al-muqaddim al-rabi'ah. He says, if you come to know what the majority of people are upon, min al-jahli bihada, from ignorance of this affair, which affair? These things that have that the Sheikh has just mentioned, the meaning of La ilaha illallah, the dangers of shirk, uh, that the prophets were all sent with the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the religion of Allah jalla wa ala, and all of them called them to call the people to Islam. Like you will find, he says, that the people or the majority of people are upon ignorance with regards to this. Once you know these four things, what this is the natija where the Sheikh says, that gives you two benefits on top of it, right? And natija. The natija and the conclusion or the result of knowing that which has proceeded is what? Or the four points that, has, that have proceeded. Afada kafaidatain. You have two benefits. So he's now going to mention two benefits that come about from following or knowing these four things. Tafadl. The first, rejoicing in the bounty of Allah and His mercy. Just as He, the Most High, said, Say, in the bounty of Allah and in his mercy therein, let them rejoice. That is better than the wealth they amass. Now, so that is the first benefit. Al-Farahu bi fadlillahi wa rahmatihi. That they are happy with the virtue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Salaf would say, Al-Fadlu ay al-Islam. Al-Fadlu qul bi fadlillahi ay al-Islam. والرحمة وبرحمة الله أي القرآن أي القرآن نعم so the Sheikh رحمه الله is saying now that this نعمه has come to you and that you know all of these four things that I've mentioned to you then know that that is only by way of Allah سبحانه وتعالى guiding you that's why the dua of the believers are, is وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي هَدَانَا لِهَذَا وَمَا كُنَّا نَهْتَدِيَا لَوْلَا أَنْ هَدَانَ اللَّهِ the Believers thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding them. And if it wasn't for Allah jalla wa ala's guidance, then they would not have been guided. We ask for guidance. اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Like in how many people are given guidance compared to those that are not given guidance, you will find that the majority of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are upon misguidance. So now that you know this affair, 
you need to acknowledge the virtue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over you where Allah Jalla wa ala has guided you and especially more so you guys as shabab why? because there are many people your age that are doing everything but obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala however Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided you to be upright Muslims to be upright Muslims and not only that to be upon the Tawheed of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and not only that lacking to seek knowledge that is from the greatest blessings of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala upon you therefore you need to thank Allah Jalla Wa Ala for it Tafadl Wa afadaka aydan and the second benefit is Wa afadaka aydan the second and you will have benefited from having great fear of falling into this disbelief Naam Wa afadaka al-khawf min al-azim and you have fear that you will fall into that you have fear of falling into shirk that you have fear of being misguided and not saying uh, I am guided Alhamdulillah I am guided and I'm going to die upon that and so on and so forth that's why Shaykh Muhammad Rahimahullah the fourth chapter of Kitab Tawheed was what? Babu Al Al Khawf Min Shirk to fear shirk and to fear falling into Misguidance. Hence, Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Ujnumni wa baniya, and na'am al aslam. So he asked, Allah jalla wa ala, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Abu al Anbiya, the one that destroyed the, uh, the aslam with his hands, he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, distance me and my offspring from worshipping idols. Ibrahim at Taymi, who was from the Salaf, the Tabi'in, he would say, Wa man ya'manu al bala' ba'da Ibrahim, who is safe from fitna? And who feels secure from fitna after Ibrahim alayhi salam? Meaning if Ibrahim alayhi salam is not secure from fitna, then who are we? And who is anyone else after Ibrahim alayhi salam? Also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam would often say, Ya muqallib al-qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik. O turn of the hearts, make my heart firm upon your religion. So do not think that today you're, mashallah, upright, lakin uh, I am going to always stay upright. La. Hence we constantly ask Allah jalla wa ala for guidance. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Guide us to the straight path. And the guidance that you have, it increases. Just like your iman increases in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why you ask Allah Jalla wa'ala for, for guidance every single, every single day. Naam. For if you have come to know that a person can disbelieve and exit the religion by a mere word that utters with his tongue, and sometimes he may say it while he is ignorant of what he is saying, Yet he is not excused due to ignorance. No. As, <coughs> Sorry, God. And sometimes he may say it thinking that it brings him closer to Allah the Most High. As the Mushriks used to believe, and especially if Allah has inspired you to understand what he has narrated about the people of Musa, alongside their re rectitude and their knowledge, that they came to him saying, Make for us, make for us an ilahad, a God, as they have aliha. Then after all of this, your eagerness for and your great fear of what will deliver you from all of this and what is similar to it will greatly increase. Now, the Shaykh Rahimahullah, in this part, he talks about having this fear of falling into shirk. Especially after you know that a person قَدْ يَكْفُرُ بِكَلِمَةٍ وَاحِدَةٍ That he can disbelieve because of كلمة يخرجها Min lisanihi that he brings out that he utters that a person can disbelieve because of a word that he utters and this shows the dangers of uh, believing or the dangers of not preserving one's tongue even if it is a ibadah that person believes they are doing and the ways of leaving the religion of Islam or what is known as asbab ridda are mentioned in the books of the Fuqaha in the books of Fiqh, Babu Ridda, and also in books like Nawaqid al Islam, in books like Nawaqid al Islam. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah mentions that a person can leave the religion by one word or due to, due to one word, and that is why a person needs to be careful. What were the other three things, ways that a person can leave the religion? Al Qawl statement, which is here. I'tiqad, amal, action, shak, and having a doubt. All of these four things are 
ways that a person can leave the religion of Islam will iyadu billah. May Allah Jalla wa'ala keep us firm upon his religion. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna rajula la yatakallamu bi kalimatin. A person may say a word. La yara laha or ya la yara biha ba'san. He doesn't see anything wrong with it. Yahwi biha sab'ina kharifan fin nar. That he, however, he says this word and he doesn't think anything of it. Like in he descends down and falls into the depths of Jahannam for 70 years. Why? Because of one kalima that he believed was nothing. Also, Kitab Tawheed, we studied the, the, uh, in one of the chapters that a person, a man from Bani Israel, he used to constantly advise a person who was disobedient. And then one day, he got angry with him and he said, Wallahi la yaghfirullahu lak. Wallahi, Allah will not forgive you. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or this angered Allah Jalla wa'ala, and Allah said, verily, he has destroyed his action and Allah Jalla wa'ala has entered the other individual into 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 Jannah, into Jannah. So therefore, it's extremely important that a person fears that he may fall into shirk using that word or even slaughtering for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or even having a belief of the mushrikeen. He says that and he is jahil, he is ignorant. فَلَا يُعْذَرُ بِالْجَهْلِ And he's not excused with ignorance. Now the mas'ala of is a person is, is a person excused with ignorance is a mas'ala that is talked about in depth. And the scholars of Ahl-Sunnah, they have different uh, or they have uh, explanations of it. I mean, the same interpretation like in, in depth, they go into it in depth and it has different scenarios. Like in, in general, the person that Shaykh Rahimahullah here is saying, وَهُوَ جَاهِلٌ فَلَا يُعْذَرُ بِالْجَهْلِ He is a person who is jahil and he is not excused, is the person لِأَنَّهُ مفرد. So you might want to write, وَهُوَ جَاهِلٌ فَلَا يُعْذَرُ بِالْجَهْلِ لِأَنَّهُ مفرد. لِأَنَّهُ Because he came with shortcoming. Because he came with a shortcoming. So not everyone is excused due to ignorance And ignorance is of two types Jahlun haqiqi And jahlun muqtasab And you can also write a third one Al jahlu bi'uqubati dhamb Or darajati Al Iqab. So the third one the first one is what? Al Jahal Al Haqiqi. Ignorance. And a person is genuinely ignorant. For example, a person who accepted Islam not long ago. Who accepted Islam not long ago. Surah al Mas'ala. A person accepts Islam in the month of Ramadan. And then on the second day of being a Muslim, he starts to drink. Water And he takes a tablet He drinks water And then another person says to him What are you doing? As Muslims We're not allowed to eat During the month of Ramadan uh, We're not allowed to drink In the month of Ramadan And he says Subhanallah I didn't know I thought we just weren't allowed To eat food That sort of person Is he not excused? He's excused Because it's possible for him To not know this ruling Likewise a person Who lives, off, who lives in a far off land he's, There's no form of knowledge no scholars, no students of knowledge, no books, nothing. And he lives in a certain in, that, in this location, and there is no shortcoming from him. Like in, there's just a shortage of, of knowledge over there, and the only people there are people that can barely read the Fatiha. That sort of person may not know some of the rulings of the Sharia, so that sort of person may be excused. Like in a person, Methalan, who lives among us now in London. And he says, SubhanAllah, I didn't even know Salatul Jum'ah was wajib. I didn't pray because I didn't know Salatul Jum'ah was wajib. Is that accepted from him? No. And at the very least, he sees thousands and thousands of Muslims going to the masjid every single Friday. Or if he says Salatul Jama'ah, or salat, uh, the five daily prayers, I didn't even know they were wajib. Or he says alcohol, I didn't know it was haram. That is not acceptable because that is mentioned in almost every single khutbah, almost every single lecture. And that is the second type, Al-Jahl al that is the second type Al-Jahl al-Muqtasab It is ignorance that a person has Due to shortcoming of himself Due to a shortcoming of himself And he's not excused for this He's not excused for this So 
So what was the first type? Al Jahl Haqiqi, sah? And that person may be excused depending on his situation. The second was what? Al Jahl Muktasab. Al Jahl Ghayu Haqiqi. The Jahl that is not in reality accepted. And that is the shortcoming, the one that, per the person that has shortcomings. And that is the one that, or that his ignorance is due to a shortcoming from him. And that is the one that the Shaykh Rahimullah is referring to. The third one is what? Al Jahl bi uqubati dhamb or bi darajat al aqab. The fourth one, or the third one, is to be ignorant of the punishment. To be ignorant of the punishment of the sin. Or the level of punishment. To be ignorant that there's a punishment or the level of punishment. Or the fact that it takes a person out of Islam, for example. For example, Mathalan, the Prophet ﷺ, when he was in Tabuk, there were those people who used to mock the companions. They used to say they're cowards and they eat a lot and, uh, and they lie a lot. صح? And then one of the companions, he said, كذبت, ولكنك منافق. You are lying and you are a munafiq. And he went to the Prophet ﷺ to tell him what had happened. Like the revelation came down upon the Prophet ﷺ before the companion even got there. And then that person started to run to the Prophet and hold on to his camel, the rope, and say, yeah, in, uh, So for that word that they uttered, they said, we were only joking. It was just, it was just a past time. Like, what did Allah say? قُلْ أَبِاللَّهِ وَآيَاتِ وَرَسُولِ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْتَذِرُوا قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِيمَانِهُمْ Allah didn't accept it from them. We were just joking. Allah didn't accept it from them. Allah said, قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِيمَانِكُمْ You have disbelieved after your iman. So note, the محل الشاهد is what? That they knew what they were doing was what? Wrong. Like and they did not know that it was on the level of kufr and it would take them out of Islam. Understood? طيب. So that is the different types of al-jahl. Also from the things that will encourage us to stay away from shirk and sin, sinning, and other types of kufr. The hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu said, يُصْبِحُ رَجْلُ مُؤْمِنًا وَيُمْسِي كَافِرًا أو يُمْسِي مُؤْمِنًا وَيُصْبِحُ كَافِرًا That a person will wake up as a believer and the end of the day will come and he is a disbeliever. And the opposite. A person can what? Be a disbeliever in the evening and be a, be a believer in the evening and be a disbeliever in the morning. Meaning that the situation of that person can change. طيب فلا يعذر بالجهل. Then the Sheikh says رحمه وقول وقد يقولها وهو يظن أنها تقربه إلى الله. He may utter these words of shirk, making du'a to other than Allah سبحانه وتعالى, believing that it what brings him closer to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. كما ظن المشركون خصوصا في خصوصا إن ألهمك الله ما قص عن قوم نوح. Then he mentions the story of the people of Nuh, the people of Musa عليه السلام. So these people they may utter a word of shirk. Believing it brings them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Lakin in reality it takes them out of Islam Or it could take them out of Islam Then he says the people that were with Musa alayhi salam They were with a prophet And that prophet was from the Ul Azmi min al Rusul And Allah jalla wa ala had just saved them recently from who? From Fir'aun Lakin when they came across a people who were worshipping a tree They said اجعل لنا إلها كما لهم آلها Make us a God Make a God for us that we can seek blessings from just like they have a God. And then the Prophet وسلم, also the same thing that in a hadith that we studied, where did we come across this hadith? Kitab a tawheed. And Kitab? Huh? Kitab what? Usul al Thalatha? La, Usul al Thalatha. Qawai al Akbar. Usul al Thalatha? لا لا كتاب توحيد كتاب توحيد ان قواعد الاربعه وش قاعده ان قواعد الاربعه؟ ها؟ 3 اكسلنت جزاك الله خير 3 طيب آه نعم اجعل لنا الها كما لهم كما لهم لا لا they said يا رسول اجعل لنا ذات انواط كما لهم ذات انواط as they have ذات انواط as they have uh, انواط uh, where they used to hang their trees where they used to hang their tree, Afan, where they used to hang their weapons on a certain tree in order to get blessings from it. So when the companions saw it, or some of the companions, 
And the reason is mentioned when نحن حدثاء عهد بالإسلام and we recently accepted Islam. So it wasn't the companions like Umar رضي الله عنه Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه and Ali. It was those companions that accepted Islam during the year of Khaybar also. Okay. Uh, then the Sheikh says, رحمه الله فحين إذا يعظم خوفك وحرسك على أن يخلص على ما يخلصك الله من هذه من هذا وأمثاله. So having knowing or knowing that. That even those people that were with the prophets, they fell into, they may have fallen into shirk, or they said a word that could could have taken them out of Islam. Then it is more befitting for you to be aware, be aware and to be to fear falling into shirk. And this hadith will come back, inshallah, in the shubhat. They will use this as a shubha. It will come. Tafadl. Know that it is from Allah's wisdom, free is he from all imperfections, that never did he send a prophet with this tawheed, except that he set up enemies for him, and as he, the Most High, said, and so we have appointed for every prophet enemies, shayateen, among mankind and jinns, inspiring one another, one another with adorned speech as a delusion. The Shaykh Rahimahullah now mentions... Uh, in this part, that know that may Allah Jalla wa'ala guide you. Wa'alam anna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala min hikmati from the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not send a prophet behind the tawheed with this tawheed. Illa ja'al lahu a'da. Except that he made enemies for them. Enemies for these prophets. Whether they are from the jinn or the Bani Adam. Qala Jalla wa'ala wa kadhalika ja'alna li kulli nabiyin aduwan shayateen al-insi wal jinn yuhi ba'aduhum ila ba'ni zukhruf al-qawl. So Allah Jalla wa'ala says, and likewise we have made enemies for every single prophet. And these enemies being from the shayateen al-ins, the devils of the Bani Adam, the devils, the shayateen of Bani Adam, and the shayateen of those people who are uh, the jinn, or the jinn, the shayateen of the jinn. From the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that Allah made prophets, sent prophets and sent them enemies, people that would harm them, that would kill them. When Israel, they used to what? Qatalatul Anbiya, they used to kill the prophets that Allah Jalla wa ala sent to them. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw in a dream, a hadith Sawad al-A'dam, he said that, Urdat alayhi al-Umam, faraaytu al-Nabiya wa ma'ahu rahd. He said sallallahu alayhi wa in a night dream that he saw all of the nations were presented to him and he saw a prophet with a group of people and he saw another prophet with one person and another prophet with two people, two men and another one with one man and he saw a prophet and there was a prophet that no one was with meaning what? All of his followers disbelieved in him and disobeyed him so there was, there were messengers that no one followed, and that is the uh, a test. That is a test for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for them and for their people as well. And also, it is from the wisdoms that the haq is dahir, that the haq is apparent. And it is also a test for the people to see if they believe in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala or if they disbelieve in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in authentic hadith, "Ayyun nasi ashadu balaan." He was asked, "Who are the, from the, who among the people?" has the most punishment, no, not most punishment, most fitna and most test trials and tribulations. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Al-Anbiya thumma al-Amthal thumma al-Amthal fal-Amthal yubtala al-Nasu ala qadri dinihim So the Prophet Sallallahu said, the Anbiya of Allah Jalla wa'ala, they're the ones with the most fitna, most tests and tribulations that they come across. Then from them, then the people that are most righteous and the least righteous and going in order the more the righteous the more the person is a righteous person the more tests that he faces in life until that person has reached has passed away and there are no sins on him because all of the fit and all the tests that came across him were what an expiation for his sins an expiation for his sins so this is the methodology that this is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to his prophets. And having said that, the ulama are the waratatul anbiya, the ulama, the scholars, they're the inheritors of the prophets, which means what? They come under or they will have their fair portion of what? Trials and tribulations, tests. Like Shaykh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, for example, or even before that. 
Look at the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. How were they punished in Mecca? They were tortured. Some of them saw, witnessed their parents killed in front of them. They had to make hijra to Habasha, and they were harmed in every single way. Hence, they had to go back to Habasha, and they had to what? migrate to Medina, even though they wanted to what? stay in Mecca, and it was a beloved place to them. Even the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was tested, and he had to leave the place that he loved, and then. Came the companions after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Look at how many tests they came across. How many times they went to jihad. So the word of Allah can be the most high. The religion of Allah can be most high. Look how far Islam reached during their time. Radiyallahu anhum ajma'in. And then look at the time of the Salaf from the Tabi'in and the Tabi'in. Imam Ahmad rahimahullah. And the other Imams of the Sunnah that were punished because of the fitna of Khalq al-Quran, the Quran being created. They were tested. Imam Ahmad was punished for many years. And there were three different leaders that were what? Punished. That, that punished him because of the belief that Allah Jalla wa'ala revealed, upon, revealed in his Quran. Al-Quran kalamullah. Wa laysa bin makhluq. And it is not created. And he was punished. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. And by the way, Imam Ahmad wasn't the only person that was punished. Many other scholars were punished, killed, tortured. طيب. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah In the latter years he probably spent more time in jail than out of jail And he died in jail, in prison Rahimahullah ta'ala ta rahmatan wasi'a And also Shaykh Muhammad Abdul Wahab rahimahullah So everyone that follows the path of the Anbiya They also will face their fair share of what? Uh, tests Like in the Muslim what? Is a person who is patient upon the harm that comes to him. Shaykh Muhammad Abdul Wahab said in Surah Thalath, As-sabru ala al-adha, fihi to be patient with all of the tests that can come by way of all of the uh, fitan that come about. Then the Shaykh says, Rahimahullah, wa qad yakunu li'ahda'i tawheed. And the enemies of Tawheed can sometimes have a variety of types of knowledge, books and arguments which they use to extinguish the light of Tawheed. Just as he, the Most High, said, then when their messengers came to them with clear proofs, they exalted in pride with that which they had of the knowledge. Naam. فلما جاءت مرسل بالبينات قال ج قال الشيخ رحمه الله وقد يكون لأعداء التوحيد and it may be that those يعني it is the case that those people who are the enemies of Tawheed they have علوم كثيرة they have some knowledge well rather they have كثيرة knowledge that is a lot وكتب وحجج and they have books and they have Proofs that are obviously false. As Allah Jalla wa'ala says, فَلَمَّا جَاءَتْهُمْ وَصُلُهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ فَرِحُوا بِمَا عِنْدَهُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ فَرِحُوا بِمَا عِنْدَهُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ Allah Jalla wa'ala, when He revealed the Qur'an on them, upon them, they sufficed with and they believed that what they were upon was good. That's why Shaykh al-Islam, rahimahullah, he said about them, the mutakallimun, those people that busy themselves with philosophy, Greek philosophy and so on, who were apparently intelligent people, all to uluman, he says, all to uluman, they were given knowledge. ولم يؤتوا فهوما And they were not given faham, understanding. What did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينَ Whoever Allah jalla wa ala wants khayr for, he gives them understanding of the religion. Lakin Allah jalla wa ala didn't give them understanding of the religion. He also said, all to zaka'an, they were given intelligence. ولم يؤتوا Zaka'an They were not given lacking Purification Tazkiyah to nafs They were not able to purify themselves with it Although The common people The awam They had this Tazkiyah They had this fitra in them There was a time when One of the Imams Of the Mutakallimin Those that Partake in philosophy I believe it was Ghazi or someone he came and everyone was looking at him and they were amazed by his knowledge and so on. And someone said to an old woman, he's Sheikh, this, this, this. He's got a thousand evidences for the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A thousand evidences. She's a commoner. She said, if he didn't have a thousand shucks, if he didn't have a thousand doubts, he wouldn't need a thousand proofs. Hmm? That was her fitra. That was her fitra. And that's why towards the end of their lives they would say وَلَمْ نَسْتَفِدْ مِنْ طُولِ بَحْثِنَا سِوَىٰ أَنْ جَمَعْنَا قِيلَ وَقَالَ We did not benefit anything from 
all of the research and all of the traveling and all of the books that we read, except that we combined and we gathered, qila wa qala. He says, she says, things that will have no benefit. Yani fuhuman, they were not given understanding. Like they were given ulum. That's why they could debate and so on and so forth. And some of their books are good in tafsir, lakin. The misguidance that is found in them shows that they had no fiqh in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they weren't upon the aqeedah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when you have come to know all of that, i.e. what has proceeded, and when you have come to know that the path to Allah will inevitably have enemies lying in wait upon it, people have eloquence, knowledge and arguments, then it is obligatory upon you that you learn that from the deen of Allah what will in turn become a weapon for you by which you will fight against those devil shayateen those whose imam, leader and spokesperson said to your lord <coughs> the mighty and majestic surely I will sit in wait against them <coughs> on your straight path then I will come to them from before them and behind them from their right and from their left and you will not find most of them as thankful ones right the Shaykh Rahimahullah says, ذلك, if you come to know this, يعني, those Messiah that have just proceeded that Allah Jalla wa Ala sent prophets and them and uh, they had enemies, and that the enemies of the prophets they may have some sort of some sort of knowledge, like they won't have understanding of the Sharia, a comprehensive understanding of the Sharia. ذلك, if you know this, and you know that when you're on your way to on the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're calling to the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there are always going to be a'da people that are enemies to you and those people are min ahli fasaha wa ilmi wa hujaj they are people that are very eloquent in their in their speech and they have some sort of proof that they've misunderstood ayat from the kitab of Allah jalla wa ala that they misuse and look at this today al-an مثلا when they're saying to you or when the Khawarij are talking, they will mention ayah by the ayah, ayah from the Quran, hadith from the Prophet, a hadith from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Lakin la yusmin wa la yughni min jur. It has no benefit, and it is not according to understanding of the Salaf. And if you look at their understanding, their Salaf in this are the Khawarij, those same people that were killed Ali radiallahu anhu and even before him Uthman radiallahu anhu and fought against the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam those people that Abdullah, <coughs> Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu he debated those khawarij so when you see them saying mathal the hukam of the muslimun are all kuffar and they are this and they are that and they are bootlickers and anyone that doesn't make takfir of them is also a kafir anyone that doesn't to say that they are apostates is also an apostate and all of this and then they have their YouTube channels and then there's all of this anashid going on and they've got their black flags and all of this as young people you might think well like they've got some sort of knowledge like in they're talking a load of nonsense absolute nonsense and if you to ask them where do you get that from they'll say if you look at the understanding it's from Salman Auda, Safar Al-Hawali uh, Alwan Sayyid Qutub these sorts of individuals who are known for making takfir among, upon the Muslimin. That's who their salaf are. Hence they call them shuyukh. So it's important that the young person is aware that these sorts of people are misguided. Do not listen to any of their lectures. Do not look at any of their tweets. Do not follow anything from them. Whether any platform on social media, do not follow them. Because the shubuhat that they have, the doubts that they may throw at you, it may find a place in your heart. Hence the Salaf rahmatullahi alayhim ajma'een Whenever a person of bid'ah would come to them And he would want to debate with them They would put their fingers in their wah Yes And they would say Wala nisful kalima They would say Ya kalima Wala nisful kalima Wala nisful ayah Wala nisful ayah Not even half of an ayah Like we don't say Khalas We want to broaden our horizon And understand what they mean Maybe they're upon the haq Maybe they're not so bad and so on Maybe the Wahhabi are wrong for warning me against Fulan and Fulan and Fulan. No, do not say this. Ahl Sunnah from the past to now, they've always been staying away from Ahl Bid'ah. It may be that you listen to them one time and that you feel sorry for them and then your heart is deceived or عفوا, misguided because of this. So be careful. These a'da of the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have this sort of understanding. Lakin it is not an understanding upon the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
طيب لان الشيخ سيس فالواجب عليك ان تعلم يو ليرن من دين الله سبحانه وتعالى ما يصير سلاحا لك. It is important that you learn from the Sharia of Allah سبحانه وتعالى that will be that which will be a weapon for you. And knowledge is the greatest weapon that a person can be granted. Knowledge of قال الله وقال الرسول is the greatest benefit that a person can be granted. When a person has knowledge They can guide people. They can guide themselves. They can worship Allah Jalla wa'ala correctly and they can guide others. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu who is from the scholars of the companions. How many khawarij came back to the camp of the companions? Many. When he debated the khawarij, many of them came back. It is said sometimes maybe 2,000, maybe 4,000 came back. A large number of them came back. Sahih, it's true. Some remain. Lakin, a large number of them came back. And that is the benefit of how many times have we seen one alim, a alim, a scholar, who Allah Jalla wa'ala makes him a reason for the guidance of a whole ummah. Don't go far. Look at Yemen. Imam Muqbil rahimahullah ta'ala rahmatan wasi'a. A man who was an ummah on his own. Shi'ism was widespread. Rawafida everywhere in Yemen. And he revived the da'wah of a tawheed. Da'wah of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Da'wah to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And he started off in a masjid which was many times smaller than this masjid Many times smaller than this masjid This masjid would be luxury compared to the masjid that he started off from Rahmatullahi Alaihi Wasallam Wasi'ah And he went through difficult times like in his tribe They tried to bomb the masjid that he was giving lectures in at times And they would try to kill him Lakin he was Imam Min Al-A'imma And because of him Now we see the da'wah in Yemen. Rather, it's not only in Yemen. Like we see it everywhere in the world. There is not a place except you will find the students of Sheikh Muqbil rahimahullah ta'ala rahmatan wasi'ah. And they're not only young students of knowledge. They're not young students of knowledge. They are the ulama of their country. Many different places. According to the da'wah of Sheikh Muqbil rahimahullah ta'ala rahmatan wasi'ah. Like he had a'da'a. Lakin did he just say, خلاص, you know, I want to call to Tawheed and, you know, I hope Yemen is rectified because of me. La. He sought knowledge. He went to Jam'a Islamiyah, studied, uh, uh, studied over there, got his degree, done two masters at the same time. And he sought knowledge under these great Imams over at his time, rahmatullahi alayhi. Another one, Imam Nasir al-Din al-Bani, rahimahullah. There's not a khutbah that you hear or a lesson that you hear, illa you hear sahahahu al-Bani. ضعفه الالباني رحمه الله. So these great imams, they strive lacking with knowledge, and that is only that is the only way that a person can what protect himself and protect others. طيب ما تقاتل به هؤلاء الشياطين الذين قال إمامهم ومقدمهم ومقدمهم لربك. So their imam, these enemies of the Tawheed of Allah, their imam said what لا أقعدن لهم سرط كنستقي. He genuinely he said he's going to stand in your path. Everywhere, everywhere, on your left, on your right, everywhere he'll come to you. And every person he comes to from a different angle. That's why the Prophet said in the hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, where the Prophet drew a long line on, across the floor. And he said, هذا سراط الله المستقيم. That is the straight path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he drew lines on the right and the left. And he said, there's a road, there's not a path that crosses the bright path or the straight path, except that at the head of it is a what? Is a shaitan calling to it? A shaitan that is calling to it. طيب. ولكن إذا أقبلت على الله سبحانه وتعالى وأسقيت إلى حجة الله سبحانه وتعالى وبيانات وبياناته فلا تخف ولا تحزن إن كيد الشيطان كان ضعيفا. لكن he says رحمه الله if you genuinely turn to Allah if you sincerely turn to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and you listen to the proofs of Allah سبحانه وتعالى then do not fear and do not grieve. Why? Because the kaid the plots of shaitan are weak. مثلا the Muslim says what? Cause the adhan, the shaitan runs away. The iqam is called and the shaitan runs away. You say, A'udhu billahi min al-shaitan al-rajim, he runs away. You say, Bismillah, and he can't share your food. You say, Bismillah, when you come into house, he cannot come into your home. Imagine this knowledge that you not only apply yourself, like you teach others, and you teach the whole community. That is why, if you ever find a community where there's a lot of knowledge, you will find things like, Misguidance and bid'ah and shirk 
and magic and sihr and all of these sorts of things are very minute. Yes, they'll exist, like in the minute. Why? Because of the knowledge of Al Islam. Ilm is no, it is guidance. Afwan, it is what? Light. Knowledge is light that guides. Guides to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Shaykh says, Rahimahullah, The Ami, the common person from the Muwahideen, Yaghlibu al alf min ulama'i ha'ula. Yaghlibu al alf min ulama'i ha'ula. Yaghlibu alf min ulama'i ha'ula. The Ami, min ha'ula al mushrikin, the Ami, the common person upon the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is not a alim, lakin he knows the proofs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala found in the Quran and the Sunnah. He's among and he lives among and he goes to the classes of the people, the ulama of Sunnah. Lakin he's not a alim, maybe not even a student of knowledge. Lakin he what? He has these proofs and he is able to protect himself and refute the shayateen. جَلَّ وَعَلَى جُنُودِ The soldiers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who are fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are the ones that will have the upper hand. That is why the person, the army, the, by the way, the army that is being referred to here is not like the army that does not have any knowledge whatsoever. It is the one that has some sort of understanding of Shaykh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he knows the evidences to the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مثلا, the ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, there was an army of this kind, and he was debating one of those, or he was talking to one of these people that call upon the dead. عند ربهم يوزقون فلا تحسبن الذين عند ربهم يوزقون قلت في سبيل الله عند ربهم يوزقون على أي حال in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are what? يوزقون they are being provided for they are being given رزق then the army said to him, Yugzakun or Yugzakun? They knew Arabic. He goes, Yugzakun or Yugzakun? There's a difference. Yugzakun, they are being provided for. Yugzakun, they are the ones that are what? Providing. So the ayah says what? Yugzakun. So he said, Bima anahum, if it is the case that they are being provided for, then what can they give me? If they are being provided for, Sahih. They have been provided for, what can they give me? And he was a army, a person upon what? The Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knew the evidences. And then the Shaykh says, So the people who are calling to the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are the ones that will have the upper hand. We've proven upon knowledge. Like they are, those that are what? Those that will have the victory uh, with the sword so al ghalaba is of two types al ghalaba to bil ilmi wal hujja ghalaba to be victorious with al ilm wal hujja knowledge and hujja proof and knowledge and that is throughout or every single time every single era and the Prophet said, "La tazalu ta'ifu min ummati zahirin ala al-haq, la yadurhum man, ha, min khalafuhum, wala min khadalhum." Kama qal Salam. He said that there is always, there will always remain a people that are upon the haq. Clear, it is clear that they are upon the haq. And the second is what, al-ghalab to be safe, a al-jihad, to be victorious through the jihad of Allah. Fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he says, Wainam al Khawfu ala muwahid al ladi yasluku al tariq wa laysa ma'ahum silah. Lakin, we fear for the person, the fear is for who? The person we're worried about, we fear for the person that is the muwahid, lakin he doesn't have any proof. He doesn't have any silah with him, silah, any weapons with him. And what is the silah that is being referred to? Al ilm, knowledge. So in here, in this part, the Shaykh rahimahullah is showing you. Uh, how the Muslim should be, i.e., a person, he should be a person 
that seeks the truth and he should be a talib al-ilm a person that seeks knowledge and it and he shows the ugliness of jahl and ignorance then the shaykh says rahimahullah wa qad manna allah alayna bi kitabi allah subhanahu bi kitabihi alladhi ja'alahu tibyanan li kulli shay wa hudan wa rahmatan wa bushra lil muslimin fala yati sahibu batil bi hujjatin illa wa fi al-qur'an ma yanqidha wa ma yanqidha ويبين بضلنا كما قال تعالى ولا يأتونك ولا يأتونك بمثل إن جئناك بالحق وأحسن تفسيرا عند الشيخ سيز رحمه الله تعالى رحمة واسعة أوابا قال بعض المفسرين هذه آية هذه الآية عامة في كل حجة يأتي بها أهل الباطل إلى يوم القيامة he says this last part where he says رحمه الله تعالى رحمة واسعة and Allah جل وعلا has given us the blessing of what having a kitab a book by Allah سبحانه وتعالى meaning the Quran of Allah سبحانه وتعالى in which a person in which a person or which clarifies and gives guidance in the Quran yahdi lil lati yaqum guides to the best of the paths eh? guides to the best of the paths qul huwa lil ladina amanu hudan wa shifa it is a guidance and a cure for the believers so this quran it clarifies everything that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam everything that the muslim needs fala yati sahibu batil and a person of falsehood will not come except in the Quran we find that which destroys his bid'ah and the salaf would say that a mubtadi does not use a verse a ayah from the kitab of Allah or a hadith except in the same evidence there's proof against him a person cannot use an ayah from the Quran of Allah or a hadith from the Prophet to prove his batil his falsehood except in the exact same evidence there's proof against him. Hence, Shaykh al-Islam rahimahullah would constantly repeat this verse. Would constantly repeat this. <coughs> constantly repeat this qa'ida. Constantly repeat this qa'ida. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Rahmatan wasi'ah. Naam. Then the Shaykh says, Walaytum bin Naam. So the Mufassirun would say that this verse is am. So there is not a shubha, a doubt, a misguidance that will appear in the ummah from those who are upon falsehood except there is proof for it in the Quran and the Sunnah. That is why the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always be, will always prevail over every other falsehood. And it will remain. Look at the call, look, مثلا, look at the time of Imam Ahmad rahimahullah. Those people who came with falsehood that said the Quran was created, who remembers them? Who remembers them now? We don't know their names. And even if their names are mentioned, it is in the way of what? In a blameworthy uh, context like in Imam Ahmed everyone knows furthermore if you say Imam Ahl Sunnah you know exactly who he's been referred to Imam Ahmed if you say Shaykh al-Islam you know who he's been referred to these people that were fighting Shaykh, Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah that wanted him arrested and so and wanted him killed who are they now no one knows them if it wasn't for the books of Shaykh Ibn Taymiyyah Imam Ibn Taymiyyah which he mentions their name in which he mentions their name no one would have known them Bakri. Bakri is who? We would never have known who Bakri was. Or even that a person called Bakri existed. Like him, because there's a book refuting him, we know exactly who he was. Likewise, Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Rahim Rahimahullah Ta'ala Rahmatullah Wasi'ah. Those people who were preventing him from Hajj, <coughs> where are they now? Where's their da'wah? Wal'aqibatul lil muttaqin. Where is their da'wah? All of those people that were fighting him. It's preventing him from Hajj, saying that you've got to give us the X amount of horses, X amount of money, and so on. And even not only that, not only preventing them from Hajj, like in going to them, trying to fight them and killing them. Where are they? Where's their da'wah now? No. Non existent. Their da'wah, if, any, if anything, is in the da'wah of those people that are calling upon other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their inheritors are those people that are calling upon other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas the inheritors of Shaykh Muhammad Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala rahmatullah wasi'a are Ahlul Tawheed. They are studying his books. And in his books they find what? Qala Allah wa qala Rasul. Allah jalla wa ala said in the Quran. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, look at how many ayat and hadith we've come through. طيب. Also there's an important qa'ida. The madhab of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'a is wasatun بين الفرق في جميع مسائل العقيدة. The madhab of Ahlul Sunnah is always on the middle path with regards to every single misguidance. 
مثلا القدر of Allah سبحانه وتعالى there are those that deny the قدر then there are those that go overboard with regards to the قدر of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and أهل السنة are in the middle path <coughs> a person that commits major sins there are those that say the one that commits major sins is a kafir then there are those that say the one that major commits major sins he's like Jibreel his iman is like Abu Bakr لكن أهل السنة say مؤمن بإيمانه فاسق بكبيرته he's a مؤمن in his iman لكن he's a فاسق a disobedient person because of his sin الإيمان belief أهل السنة believe that iman increases and it decreases and it consists of a statement that you utter a belief in your heart and action and li- with your limbs لكن the خوارج and the معتزلة they say لا it is one thing If it leaves the person's body, if it leaves the person's heart, then all of it leaves. That's why they say what? Anyone that falls into a major sin is a kafir. Likewise, murjia. They say what? Khalas, it doesn't matter. You can fall into whatever you want. As long as you, once upon a time you said, La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah, then you're good to go. You can do what you want. And your iman is the same as Abu Bakr. Your iman is the same as Abu Bakr. So Ahlul Sunnah, their madhab, And their methodology is always wasad, wasad bayna al-firaq. Then the shaykh says, rahimahullah, hmm? Hmm? <laughs> Then the shaykh says, rahimahullah, <laughs> so now he's going to start on, he's going to start a new chapter. He's going to talk about answering. So now we've just finished the first part of the book. What was the first part of the book? The Muqaddimah And the Muqaddimah consisted of, consisted, of, consisted of foundations Usul That we're going to need to carry over Now So from next week inshallah We're going to start looking at the Shubuhat The doubts that they mention And he's going to mention two ways Refuting them in a general context And refuting them specifically So he's going to start with Giving a general answer for all types of Baatil So that's where we'll be, that's where we'll start from next week. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa ahkam wa billahi tawfiq. I forgot to mention last week, or a brother brought to my attention, uh, Brother Shu'ab, may Allah Jalla wa'ala preserve him. A few weeks ago when we started the muqaddimah, I mentioned that from the important usul is that the person that you're debating with, he must what? Be on the same wavelength as you. He must take the evidence that you're, uh, that you're debating him with. And I mentioned, for example, a person who says, I'm a Qur'ani. I'm not going to take the, uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. He won't accept the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. But you can easily debate him with the Qur'an. And I mentioned that the mulhid, the atheist, if you say to him, Qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he won't accept the Qur'an. صح? However, it is not in that general context. Because in the Qur'an of Allah, there are many ayat that refute who? The mulhidun. The mulhidun. أم خلقوا من غير شيء أم هم الخالقون. There are many verses that refute them from intellectual base uh, 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 on intellectual grounds. So they will have no answer to this. So that sort of or those sorts of verses, obviously they are a proof and they will accept. They would be forced to what to accept them. Like what I was referring to more is like for example things to do with. When they say, like, you guys, uh, the inheritance of women or the hijab and so on. When you bring them ayat of the hijab, they'll just say, I don't even believe in it, Aslan. So that's what I meant. So, Jazahullah khair, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. And he could have written a PDF. So the teacher doesn't believe in the Qur'an. Sah? Lakin, obviously, he didn't. Jazahullah khair, may Allah preserve him for not writing a PDF.